This is the best controller I have ever used. And I've used many controllers in my time. There's something special about this, but there's there's a few buts. It's not all positive. So before we jump in, I want to say a quick thanks to PlayStation for the review code, the not code, review unit. And uh, let's jump into what makes this controller a little bit different from the standard DualSense. So here is probably the, the main addition to this controller, the back buttons. So these have been assigned for me personally to X and circle. So as you see, when I naturally hold the controller, my finger is there ready to go. So it's in a more natural position. It means I don't have to move my thumb as well away from the thumb stick to press X or circle. My finger is already there, ready to go. We have to compare this controller, of course, to the Elite controller. As you can see, there is four slots here. Would be nice to have the option to have an additional two back buttons on the Edge controller, just being honest. Um, so that's a negative. And then we come to the triggers. These have a little texture on them. They've got the X, the circle, the triangle. It gives you that little bit of reassurance that your finger won't sort of slip off. It's nice. It's definitely a nice reassurance. Also, next to the trigger, you will see this little bar here for both sides as well. So currently it's going all the way down like a standard dual sense. So that is the, the free setting. If we go to the middle setting, the trigger will only travel halfway. So your response time is that little bit quicker. Cooler Duty, I'll go down to the shortest setting. And again, it barely moves. It's so responsive. Honestly, you see an enemy on the screen, bang, he's gone, he's dead, he's gone. <laughs> it's, it's so responsive. So it may surprise you, you can actually remove the whole analog stick, which is kind of crazy, right? So you may have heard of, the, heard of something called drifting. This is where the controller can show its age and the stick naturally seems to move you in one direction. And it's very, very annoying. Obviously this being a very expensive piece of equipment, you you want you you don't want it to drift. <laughs> so you can take off the front panel and you may see those little latches there on the right and you can remove the high analog stick and replace it. Look, how crazy is that? There we go. So that's a really cool addition and definitely something I wanna see more of in the future. If they honestly can't fix the drifting, I, I think this would be a really good option for the future, fingers crossed. So these are the analog sticks you get with the console. This is the standard DualSense one on the right. And this is the slightly longer domed analog stick. I also get the domed one, but in a shorter form. Personally, I prefer the longer ones for that slightly more accurate shot, particularly with sniping, for example. These are definitely a good option. I mean, it would be nice to maybe have the standard DualSense stick, but maybe make them longer as well. Maybe they can add more variants later on. Other additions you may see there, there is a slightly grippier texture. It does feel generally nicer in the hand compared to the standard DualSense. So this feels a bit more grippy. And you will see a couple of function buttons at the bottom of the controller. I'm gonna to touch on that right now. So when you turn the edge on for the very first time, you'll be welcomed by basically a tour of the product, the triggers, the back buttons, the analog sticks, how the controller works. Also, you'll be introduced to these function buttons below the analog sticks. These both do exactly the same thing. So within a game or on the home screen during multiplayer, single player, you can press these function buttons to change a profile, basically change how the controller works whenever you want, which is kind of crazy. So you can assign a profile to triangle, circle, X and square. There's a default profile, which basically makes it a standard dual sense. Um, so you wanna make another profile to at least add the back buttons on. So for example, I did X and circle. So in terms of Call of Duty, I can quickly crouch whenever I want, or I can do a jump, a dolphin dive <laughs> or a slide. And I just found it really useful. I didn't really, I, I didn't quite understand how it's gonna work in terms of, would it really improve my gameplay? It just makes it a lot easier. And my hand's not like trying to tangle and press all the buttons at the same time. It's just, my finger's just there naturally. So the back button is definitely useful. And also you can assign any button. You could put, for example, if you wanted to, X on the down D-pad or circle on the analog stick. You can do whatever you want. Um, it's completely custom, which is a very nice feeling. It feels 
individual to yourself and how you want to play. So let's go into the stick sensitivity. So this is where you can basically customize the analog sticks to be how you want them to be. There's a default option, there's a quick option, there's a precise option, there's a steady option, there's a digital option and dynamic. And you can go into these by the way and really fine tune it as much as you want, which is really, really nice. So for again example, I would go for maybe a quick action with the stick. If I wanna go for a close combat, SMG, multiplier, um, I really wanna be on the ball. I wanna get those quick shots in. Precise or steady, potentially, for sniping or for long range shooting. Obviously there's more examples as well, of course, but this is the couple of the examples I could think of. I would love to see these profiles, by the way. Maybe if a new game comes out, the perfect profile for the, for the Edge controller. I think that'd be a really cool suggestion. Hopefully they do that in the future. You can also fine tune the, the triggers. So you can have a, a quicker starting point if you want to. So for example, I tried um, seven. So that first 7% basically is not there. It's not activating. It's like almost like a dead zone, I guess. And I also tried 99 and it just activates <laughs> at the very, very last second. So I love the customization with the sticks, with the profiles. I think they work really well. I was under the assumption that these profiles could only be changed outside of a game. That is completely wrong. I love the fact you can adapt on the fly, change to a different profile. Maybe you're not feeling as quick or you want a little bit more steadiness with your aiming. Again, you can just switch the profile, which is such a cool idea. And again, I'd love to see profiles maybe made um, by the developers for the controller. That'd be really, really cool, fingers crossed. But we have to talk about the elephant in the room the battery life. Um, so I've been using the controller for about four hours. It's already down to one bar. And it does feel roughly around the same as the DualSense, probably a little bit less. There's obviously a lot more technology within this controller. Um, but I must admit, for the price, I would want a bigger battery. This is 210 UK pounds or $200. So it's a very expensive piece of equipment. And if we compare it to the Elite, which is 140 pounds, it's a lot less. That is 70 pounds difference. Yes, this controller does not have haptic feedback, the adaptive triggers, which obviously is a factor, but it does have more slots on the back. I've tried doing this summary, this, this end of the video outro so many times. I feel so conflicted. Um, the battery life is disappointing. The price is disappointing, but I do love the profiles, the, the PS5 software. I love the look of this controller, by the way. It looks so good. Oh, it does look so, so good. Um, I love the analog sticks, the fact you can just replace them, the back buttons, the triggers. Love the feeling in my hand as well. It's, again, my favorite controller, but the price, the battery life is disappointing. So I'm just gonna end it there. Um, I was trying to do like a summary of who this controller's for, but I don't know, I've tried my best to sum up my feelings on this controller and I hope it's come across. Um, again, thanks to PlayStation for sending me this over. Um, yeah, if you buy it, you're in for a treat. Don't feel like you have to buy it by any stretch. I do not, it's not an essential piece of PlayStation 5 tech. Um, it's just, it's just a very, very nice controller. Thank you guys for watching and bye-bye.